Hi students! Today in this video I'm going to correct the exercise 2 from the lab session 5. So I'm correcting it because many of you made mistakes and so I want to make sure that you've understood how the exercise works. So the objective was to say in which, um, in which column and in which row the diagrams that I gave you correspond. This grid corresponds to uh, what I showed you in class. It's to, to show that UML can be used to create UML diagrams of different types. Basically, you have different types of um, views. You have the structure view, the behavior view, and the functionality view. That corresponds to the columns. And then you have three lines. The first line corresponds to diagrams that are very simple and that you can use with the client to specify his needs. This is the first line. The second line corresponds to diagrams that you can use with the development team of computer scientists. And the third row corresponds to diagrams that are very, very precise and that explain how the system works for developers who will use your system after and maybe update the code. So let's take a look at the first diagram here. This is obviously a package diagram. If you look at the elements in the package diagram, they're quite simple. There's not that much information, so it's obviously in the structure view. And then you have to decide if it's an A, D, or J. Um, for me, this is something you would not really show a client. So I would say it's in D because it's not super precise, so I don't really see it in J. So let's put it in D. Here you put D1. Let's look at the second diagram, D2. In D2, you see it's an activity diagram, and it's a very simple one. Choose a menu, then there's a choice, select an element from the menu, and then pay. This is typically, typically a diagram that you can use with the client to explain or to understand how something works. So this one can be used to model the behavior, so it's in the second column, and it can be used with the client, so it should be in B. Now let's look at D3. Diagram 3 is a class diagram. It's also very simple, person, house, room, dog. It has a few links, there's nothing on the links. So it's not very precise. And this is something you could also use with the client. So I would say it should be in the column structure, obviously, because it's a class diagram. And I would put it up here on the first line. OK, let's look at the next one. This one is a sequence diagram. If you look at it, it represents a test. This means that it's very precise. It gives you a method and it tells you what you should expect, the result that you should expect when you use that method with this set of in parameters. So for me, this is very precise and it could be used at the end. It's, it's, it can be used to test um, the system and to update it. So it should be in the behavior because it's a sequence diagram, and it should be an H, so D4. Let's look at the next one. Uh, this one's a tricky one, the D5, because it looks very simple. It's a class diagram, but if you look at the names of the classes, these are definitely not classes that you would use with a client because he has no idea what a G panel or a G text field is. So it should not be on the first line. It can be on this line, on the second line, or on the third line. If you look at it correctly, you can see that it says that a G label, a G panel, and a G text field and a G button extends from G component. This is not really important for organizing the team that you're going to work with. It's more, you can use this to explain something something that's already been developed, for example. So I would tend to put it more on the last level to say that it's part of a document that explains 
how something works. So I would put it here. Okay, now let's look at diagram six. Diagram six is a sequence diagram. It represents the player and here you have different parts of the system. These are definitely objects with the type of the class. If you look at the different methods, they're quite precise because you see here you have the name of the method with the in parameters. You have a loop. This for me is quite precise. It's actually very precise. The only thing that's missing is the return parameters. You see, for each method, they should have a return. Uh, so this makes me think I would put it on the last line, but because the, of the fact that there is no return messages, maybe we could also put it on the second one because it's not completely precise. Let's say it could be a bit more precise. So it's definitely in this line and this column, the column behavior, and I would put it in H or E. I'll put it in both. Both. So six and uh, H I said, D6. Okay, let's look at D7. Uh, D7 is actually part of, there's three diagrams that look very similar. There's D7, there's D10, and D11. I put them there on purpose so that you could see how the same diagram could be different, could have different levels of abstraction. This one is clearly the simplest. So this one should be for the client. And you can see that all the terms that are used are not too complicated. So this should be in the column behavior, oh, sorry, uh, functionality, and on the top level, D11. Then if you look, this one is a bit more complicated, so it should be an F, D, 10. And the last one is the same diagram, but even more complicated, so it should be in I, D, 7. Okay, let's look at D, 8. D8 is a sequence diagram. You see that here the system is not represented in much detail. It's one black box. You don't see what's happening inside. You also have the client, the restaurant, and the bank. So this is a diagram that represents the connections between the client, the restaurant, the system, and the bank. If you look at what's written on it, these are not methods, these are just sentences. So this is not really a code, it's just explaining how things work and how the objects interact with each other. So this could be used with a client, for example. You can put it, therefore, in the behavior column and in B. D8. Okay. Let's look at this diagram. This is a class diagram. It has several classes, and each classes have attributes and methods. The links are there, okay. The only thing that's bothering me is that you see these methods do not have any in parameters or out parameters. And for the attributes, you do not know if they're public, private, protected, you do know it here, but for me, this is something, this is a diagram that is not precise enough to be used for code documentation, but can be used for organizing a team. So for me, this goes in the column structure and goes in the middle line. So D. All right, let's look, oh, we did this one, we did this one too. Let's look at diagram 12. Diagram 12 is a sequence diagram. Now let's look at what there is. There's the client. Uh, here you have um, basket. What you have in the basket, the lines in the basket. Okay. If you look at what's on the methods, there are not quite methods because you see, first of all, there's a capital S. That's not good. Capital V, that's not good either. There is one parameter here, but 
you see there's several parameters missing and you do not have the return parameter either. So this is too complex to show to a client, but it's not precise enough to be used for code documentation. So once again, I would put it in the middle line and it's in the column uh, behavior, sorry, because it's a sequence diagram. So it should be in E. Okay, let's look at the last one. Oh, maybe there's two more. Let's look at diagram 13. Diagram 13 is a class diagram. In the diagram, you have attributes and you have methods. The methods do not have any return type. Hmm. They, don't not, they don't have any in parameter either, but there are getters. Uh, update should have, update, well, maybe not. Hmm. Well, for me, this is precise enough to be in the code documentation. The only problem is you should have a return type. Get total price should return probably an int. The same for these, but that's the only thing that I can see. Oh, you don't see any names on the lines. That means that we don't have the names of the attributes. That's not so good. Okay, so for me, D13 cannot be put in the last one because there are a few things missing. So we can put it in D. Okay, last one, D14. Ah, this one looks complete. This is a class diagram. And it is complete. You can see that each method has in parameters and the return parameter. For me, this is a good class diagram that can be used for code documentation. So it can be put in the last line, J, D14, and in the column structure, of course, because it's a class diagram. There you go. We finished the exercise. I hope this helps you understand the mistakes that you've made, and goodbye.